दिस इज आकाशवाणी बेंगलुरु गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू टू नाइट्स युवाणी I am Jyoti Das and accompanying me tonight are chartered accountants Pratik Shapai and Sanket Nayak and we are going to talk about mutual funds which might be a very note worthy initial step in the investment journey of all our young recruits and entrepreneurs so Sanket let's start by asking you to explain what mutual funds are in simple terms so good evening everyone so let us make it in a very simple manner today in our country we have a very uh, investing mindset which we have among people people may want to invest in the stock markets in equities but what happens is there are some practical difficulties which they face one is that they don't have the time or sometimes they don't have the knowledge or sometimes they don't have the expertise so what options do we have so next best avenues which we can look at are mutual funds what is it that happens in a mutual fund so in a mutual fund there are money which is pooled from a lot of people from a lot of investors and this is then invested in lot of options like it could be equities could be debt could be bonds could be government securities or any other kind of investment avenues there is a fund manager who is a professional expert and what happens is he or she will then research that company the sector the industry the past performance and look into a lot of factors which as a layman a person may not be able to look at because they are entering this professional services a small fee is then deducted from our mutual fund holdings pratiksha how safe do you think mutual funds are i should say the baseline is that any investment avenue is not 100% safe we have heard low risk low return high risk high return even in the low risk category nobody claims that it is 100% safe as we are talking to youngsters over here i would like to say that we should tell the complete phrase which is low risk low return low loss high risk high return high loss so nothing is completely safe having said this i would like to say that mutual fund may be a notch safer than directly investing in the equities market if you are a beginner because you may not have the expertise while investing in share markets by yourself you may not have the knowledge you may not have the time to continuously monitor your portfolio since there is a professional expert involved in the mutual fund scenario it makes it a notch safer than the equity market also mutual funds are regulated by sebi that is securities and exchange board of india which is a capital market regulator so see there is someone who keeps an eye on the mutual funds and their activities so since there is a regulatory body makes it certainly a bit more safer okay that safety net is what it provides mutual fund houses have to be registered and approved with sebi before launching any mutual fund schemes also if we are talking about debt mutual funds they have something called credit rating okay these debt mutual funds are given credit rating so the investor can see the higher the credit rating the lower is the probability of default so as i always say investor beware and investor aware which means you have to know what you have to see what you have to check what you have to examine before even you are investing in a mutual fund check the credit ratings and when you are investing in mutual fund check the past performance of the mutual fund check the track record of the mutual fund and then you can see if that fits your risk appetite you can invest in such mutual fund sanket in a company i know the value of my share what is the equivalent of that in mutual fund scenario now normally we see in stock prices we keep seeing that this is the share price of a particular share today so similarly is there something in mutual funds yes there is something called net asset value it is also called as nav nav is the price of one unit of a mutual fund whatever you have invested in the mutual funds it gets divided into multiple units so let's say you have 100 units or 1000 units the nav is multiplied into number of units and that's how you determine your price so the nav is usually determined once the market closes at the end of the day the nav is determined and this has to be mandatorily disclosed and it is something which sebi has mandated and the methodology is also prescribed 
so it is a very fair and transparent manner in which it is determined let's say you invest certain money today you invest 10000 rupees in a mutual fund so how is it that the number of units are determined so the whatever the nav of that mutual fund on that day your investment divided by the nav it gives you the number of units which you will get on that particular day let's say you want to sell your mutual fund holdings you can either say i want to sell so many number of units or you can say that i want to get so much money in that case whatever money which you are looking for gets divided by the nav of that day and the number of units to that extent is sold or you can even sell the entire holdings as well that is a choice left to you pratiksha is the investment in mutual funds a one time investment or is it supposed to be done regularly i should say there are uh, many strategies of how you can invest but keeping in mind our listeners who are youngsters who might be young entrepreneurs or who might be in job scenario i would like to mention a few key strategies something that every uh, person would have known would have at least listened on youtube by now is something called sip that is the systematic investment plan this is best for people who are in jobs to become a disciplined investor you set one particular target amount you set a particular date and you set a particular frequency say you can invest 2000 every month then you will target and set that amount as 2000 and say you want to invest every month then you will set your frequency as monthly and say you get your salary on first of every month so maybe you can set your target date as second of every month now that you have set your amount your frequency and your date you can automate this process where that particular amount goes out from your account into a mutual fund of your choice on that particular date at that particular frequency now this frequency could be monthly quarterly annually whatever it is based on the investor's personal choice when you do an sip as i said since it is automated every month you don't have to do this exercise your money goes out of your account automatically you have that disciplined way of investing and this is ideal for a long term secondly there is the lump sum way of investing say you are in a job and you got a good bonus and you don't know what to do with that money you can put a lump sum in the mutual fund or this is also good for entrepreneurs where there is no fixed income every month same date same time you know your bank account may not get credited so what do you do at that point of time you can choose for a lump sum investment whenever you have a good trade whenever you have a good deal whenever there is a good business income so you can lump sum invest in a mutual fund the third thing which i would like to tell for our young entrepreneurs is the stp method which is the systematic transfer plan what happens in this say in your business suddenly you got 1 lakh and you want to invest this you can invest in a particularly safer mutual fund like a liquid fund and from there you can automate that every month or every quarter or whatever is your frequency at so and so date a small amount will be transferred from that fund to another fund like an equity fund so what you are doing suddenly with 1 lakh you may not have the risk appetite to put in an equity fund or a highly volatile fund put in a comparatively safer fund and every month a small amount will be transferred to a more volatile high return fund so this is an sip but in a very different manner because people who are in business who are entrepreneurs may not get that amount on that date every month but they can put a lump sum park it in one safer fund you are getting returns there also and in a systematic manner it is also going in a high return fund to give an example you put 1 lakh in a liquid fund and you say that every month 4000 has to go to an equity fund and for the next 25 months it should be happening like that in an automated manner so slowly you are transferring your money from a low risk to a high risk fund this can also operate in an opposite manner say your age is increasing and you want to reduce your risk taking capabilities first you put in a high risk fund and slowly transfer it into a safer fund sankhe please tell us how long should one stay invested how to exit exiting a mutual fund today is very easy you just need a smartphone and internet connection what is it that you have to keep in mind when you want to exit so that's something which you need to understand 
so each person may have their own goal at the end of the day so we cannot say one size fits all so each of us can have our own strategy our own goal and based on that when we have achieved that or when we reach there we can come out of that mutual fund so one of the things which you need to understand is something called an exit load it may not be there for all funds but it can be there for some funds when you are selling it within a particular timeline that fund house may impose certain charges and that is something called an exit load this may be to discourage let's say early selling because that fund would based on your investment determine their strategy as well based on this you can decide if there is a very small timeline left if you can postpone your selling you can look at that as well or let's say if it's a very long term fund like a retirement fund or something like that the exit load may be there up till a certain timeline and if you want the money you can come out of it don't exit just for the sake of it let's say you achieve your goal then you are well within your limits to come out of that mutual fund and also there is an option wherein you can exit partially as well you can just withdraw the necessary amount what you want let's say you want your corpus is about 10 lakhs now you want to take out 1 lakh you can just sell number of units which is required to get that 1 lakh itself you did not dispose your entire holding the longer you are normally you get better returns that's the normal um, trend which we see my final question is to you pratiksha what should be your exit strategy when might one choose to exit see everyone plans a lot while entering a fund or while investing in a mutual fund but generally they exit in a panic so when you are entering with planning you should not exit with the panic there should be planning in exit also and this is called as an exit strategy you should have an exit strategy even when you are entering you should know that what is your target and on achieving that target you can exit basically i would like to talk about three points which gives you a signal that now you can exit firstly if you have achieved the financial goal for which you had invested say you started investing in a mutual fund to build a corpus of 20 lakhs once that 20 lakh limit is crossed it is your signal to exit the mutual fund then secondly if the fund is changing its investment objective when you are young your risk taking capability is more so say you want to invest in an equity fund which is highly volatile high risk high return but suddenly your mutual fund scheme changes its objective and starts investing in uh, low risk low return so then that is again your cue to exit that fund and maybe invest in some other fund third exit strategy continuous poor performance suddenly you see that the performance of the mutual fund is going down or say the mutual fund started to charge higher expense ratio higher fees you may want to exit that fund when you are entering any investment know your exit strategy thank you pratiksha Thank you Sanket. We have now come to the end of tonight's Yuvavani. I am Jyoti Das and I was talking to chartered accountants Pratiksha Pai and Sanket Nayak about mutual funds.